Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matthew Sanabria, and in this video, we're going to talk about my top six behavioral interviewing questions. Now, I'm going to approach these questions from the perspective of what I'm expecting as the interviewer, and I'm also going to talk about what as what you can provide as the interviewee, so like what value you can provide when these questions are asked of you. Now, I'm not gonna go too much into how behavioral interviewing works, uh, there are various different methods out there for, for you to use when answering these behavioral interviewing questions. You can go ahead and research them. Some of them are like the star method, right? Situation, tax, uh, situation, task, action, and result, uh, or the car method, which is the cause, action, result, I believe. But there's these different methods that you can use to answer these behavioral interview questions. And I recommend that you go study them and be proficient in them because that's kind of the best way to approach these questions. Here in this video, I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just going to list my top six questions that I usually ask in my interviews and just give you those two perspectives, right? Interviewee and interviewer. So let's get right into it because I don't actually have a lot of time to record right now, but I want to give some, some content out there for you all. So let's just go right into the first question. And the first question is, tell me about a time when you had to give or receive difficult feedback. Now, this is a great question. It's probably going to be asked of you if you're in an interview. Maybe they phrase it like, tell me about a time where you had conflict or something like that. But the idea is the same. As the interviewer here, what I'm looking for is your ability to communicate with other people, especially in times of difficulty, right? Like if you have to receive difficult feedback, your communication can't be brash, can't be you know defensive. You have to kind of take it and be kind. Same thing when you're giving difficult feedback, your communication can't be abrasive, you have to show that empathy. So as an interviewer, I'm looking for you to show me that communication, show me that reflection, show me that empathy, show the ability to be kind in these situations where it's a little difficult. From the interviewee's perspective, you should be honest when you're answering this question. You might not have an example of when you've given or received difficult feedback that's on the job, right? Like a work example, but you probably have one in your life. So use a real life, honest example, because that's going to get you the best results when you're answering this question. Also, don't just answer the question and say like, that was the time show that result, right? Show what you've learned from that situation, right? Again, that star method, which I'm not going to go too much into, but situation, task, action, result, show that result of what happened as a result of giving or receiving that difficult feedback. Did you learn from it? Was there empathy built? Did the other person take that feedback well and implement it? Did you take that feedback well and implement it? Show what happened and how you grown and, and learned from it. Question number two, tell me about a time when your change resulted in downtime. Now, none of us are perfect. We all have made changes that have caused some sort of downtime. Generally, this question could be asked like, tell me a time where you broke in production or, or something like that. There's not always a time where people have broken production and you don't, it doesn't have to be a coding change either, right? It can be a, like just a general change to anything that resulted in some sort of downtime or some sort of negative impact. Now, from an interviewer perspective, what I'm really looking for here is just some feedback, right? Like some, how do you like get your feedback when it's delivered from a non-human, right? And what I mean by that is, this is kind of similar to like, how do you give and receive feedback? But when you ship something or when you change something and it's wrong, right? You did bad work, the work is incorrect, whatever it may be. It's not because you're a bad person. It's not because you suck at whatever you're doing. It's just a fact of life, right? You, you made a change, it didn't work, something's broken. That's just how it is. That's feedback that's coming back to you. Not coming from a human, it's coming from, you know, a process or a machine or whatever it may be. Like you can literally see oh, I made a change to the DNS records, I, I messed up. Or, oh, I shipped this code that deleted a file, I messed up. So it shows me as the interviewer how you can handle feedback coming from like a non-human source, usually. And it also shows me how do you handle when you're wrong? Or how do you handle when you're doing subpar work? Are you, are you taking that and growing? Are you taking that and learning? Are you taking that and spinning it? Like, what are you doing? And from the interviewee's perspective, here's your opportunity to show growth. Show the interviewer that you've learned something from that change that you made that brought downtime. Show them that you not just learn from it, but you, you implemented processes to mitigate that in the future or eliminate that risk entirely. Because let's, let's face it, 
we're going to break things. You know, we're going to mess up, but are we going to learn from it? And are we going to mitigate that in the future? That's what this question is meant to, to bring out. So as the interviewee, it's probably best for you to, again, like all questions, be honest, but show that, that growth, show that reflection, like show the fact that you saw the downtime, you saw the change, you thought about it, you fixed it, you moved on, and it's a learning experience. If you can show that, you're going to answer this question very well. Third question, what three technologies are you most proficient with? And then I have a second follow-up to that, but I'll get into it in a second. So when I ask you as an interviewer, like what three technologies are you most proficient with? I'm looking for like a depth of knowledge, right? I'm looking to see you put your best foot forward and I want to see like what you, what you tell me. There's a second part to this that is to choose one of those technologies and tell me what you don't like about it. So as the interviewer, right, I'm looking for that depth of knowledge. I'm, I'm expecting that you're telling me your top three technologies and they're supposed to be specific te technologies, right? Like I'm not saying, tell me you're good with computers. I'm saying, tell me you're good with Go or tell me you're good with JavaScript or tell me you're good with databases, right? Like be more specific here because I want to go a little deeper. And I'm also looking for your opinion here, right? When I tell you, hey, tell me your top, top three technologies and you give me three technologies and then I say, tell me something you don't like about one of them and you have nothing to say that makes me question your depth of knowledge in that topic, right? In that technology. So I'm looking for your opinion here, right? Tell me like, Hey, you know, Matt, I use go and I really hate the way that they, they do constructor methods, right? Or constructor functions. I can't guarantee my caller to provide all these fields. It's really weird. There's no private public fields, blah, blah, blah. Like that's fine. Or, Hey, I'm using a JavaScript and I hate the way they do async gateway. I would totally change that Or I use Python and I hate the fact that it's indented. Tell me something you don't like about it and tell me what you do to change it and why you don't like it. Cause I'm looking for your opinion on these things. I want to know that you're not just reaching for technologies cause you like it. I want to know that you're weighing the pros and cons of these technologies, right? If you don't, if you don't have something bad to say about the technology you're using or something that you would change, you probably haven't used it long enough and you're probably not thinking about the problem at a higher level, right? Because here as engineers, we don't just pick a technology to solve our problems all the time, we pick the right technology to solve the problem after we've weighed the pros and cons. So it's less about the technologies and more about the workflows and the features that that technology can provide us, right? So we weigh those pros and cons. As the interviewee, you can do best here when you, like, again, like all questions, you're honest. Tell me really the three, the three technologies you're proficient with. Don't try to give me an answer that you think I want to hear. Or like maybe you're interviewing for a go role or a Rust role. So you're like, oh, I should say go and Rust because if I don't, they're going to cancel me or, or they're going to get rid of me. No, be honest. Tell me the truth. We're going to dive into these things. So don't lie. This is your chance to, to be confident, right? A lot of the times when you're in an interview, you're being asked these questions. You're kind of on the back foot a little bit, right? You're kind of like, not on the, def I don't want to say on the defensive, but you're kind of being asked the questions, a question like this is your chance to be confident and shift the conversation, right? So move it from like a more reactive way and be more proactive here and say like, yeah, I'm strong in these three things. And here's what I change. And this is your chance to show that confidence, show that passion and have that come through, right? Question number four, what principles do you value most? And what principles would you say or what principles would others say that best embody you, right? So this is a really, really good question. Again, like a two part question, but still a really good one. As the interviewer, I'm looking for who you are now as a person. What's, what are you passionate about? What do you, you know, what gets you going, right? What do you like? So when you say the principles that you value the most, you're telling me what you believe in your beliefs, right? Do you value integrity? Do you value honesty, kindness, pragmatism, accountability, all of these things that are out there, diversity, whatever, whatever it may be, are you, do you value those things? This is your chance to show me who you are and what you value. And it's also a good chance for me as the interviewer to see if you checked the company principles on our website or our core values and see if you, if you've seen them and you're relating to any one of them, it's a good chance there. Cause pretty much every company has 
core principles or core values listed on their website. And if you can relate to them, great, because it shows that you're doing your research, it shows that you're caring, and it shows that you're aligning yourself with the values of the company, right? Most places don't want to hire someone when they don't share similar core values. So this is your chance to align that and show what you, what you value. As the interviewee, this is again, your, your chance to show your, your humanity. It's your chance to be honest and reflective on things because when you have to kind of step outside yourself and think about not only the principles that you value, but the principles that others would say that you embody, you kind of have to take a step back and be like, wow, what would people say that I embody? Would people say that I'm kind? Would they say that I'm in, like have integrity? Would they say that I'm honest? Would they? It's your chance to kind of step away and be a little humble and, and reflect a little bit. I love this question for that because everyone's so quick to say, here's what I value. And it's like, great. Just because you value them doesn't mean you're practicing them. So that second part of the question really like helps you self-reflect and be like, damn, am I really, I value kindness, but am I really being kind? And that's your chance to have that reflection. Next question. And this is a question <laughs> that I actually ask in every interview, regardless of whether or not the interview is behavioral or technical or whatever, I always ask this question and I love it because it spawns so much good conversation. So the question is, if you can change one thing about your current role, what would it be? And now this question is very interesting because it's meant to, it is meant, honestly, as the interviewer, it is meant to catch the interviewee off guard, right? Because this question is, you can't really prepare for this in that sense. You kind of just, it's kind of whatever's at the forefront of your mind is going to come through. So as an interviewer, I love this question because it kind of makes the interviewee, it catches you off guard. It makes you kind of be a little bit more in the moment. And it also leads to future conversations, right? It spawns these really cool future conversations. When I ask this question, I often give some additional information like it could be anything. Right. Tell me that you want to change your dental insurance or tell me that you want 401k matching or tell me that you want to get rid of that annoying coworker. Right. Like or yet you want to write your rewrite your code base in a new language. Tell me the thing that's on your mind. I just want to hear it. This is not a question where I'm going to grade you and be like, oh, my God, they answered it this. No, this is just a question that spawns that conversation. And as the interviewee from that perspective, this is your chance right? This is your free for all question where you can talk about whatever matters to you and whatever you want. This is your chance to pivot the conversation. You know, like maybe we're, we're talking about a certain aspect. And now that I asked you if you would change one thing, and this is your chance to be like, you know what, I'd actually pivot here and I'd do this. Like, this is your chance to, to take control a little bit more of the conversation and pivot it to a place where you might want it to go and just have those fun conversations. And and connect more as humans, right? Rather than just like an interrogation. Do you know this technology? Do you do this? The miss the deadline that like, instead of getting away from that and stepping back and this is where it becomes more of a conversation, right? So I love this question because it's led to some of the best discussions I've had in interviews and it spawned all cool sorts of conversations that I probably wouldn't have covered if I just stuck to like the resume and the traditional behavioral questions. It spawns some really cool stuff. And I've got to learn so much about people just through this question. Last question is, is there something you wish I would have asked you about? Now, as the interviewer, this is showing the interviewee that you're respecting their time and that you're allowing them to speak, right? This is kind of an invitation that the interviewer can extend to the interviewee that like, hey, here's your chance to speak more and to like steer the conversation again, right? Because let's be honest, as an interviewer, I'm going to read your resume. I'm going to read your cover letter, right? I always do that. I always read a cover letter and I always read your resume, like the first couple of roles that you list. I read that. I can't cover everything. We only have maybe 45 minutes to an hour in the interview. I can't cover everything. I'm going to miss things. I'm going to focus on areas that you might be weak in and you might be like, oh, why are they asking me about this? And I might miss areas that you're strong in vice versa, or some com combination of all of that. So this is your chance to, again, pivot the conversation, showcase those strengths. Maybe we're in an interview and we're talking about Linux and you're like, not really that strong in Linux, but you're really, really good in Windows. And you wish that I would have spoken more about Windows. This is your chance to say to me, 
hey, I really wish you would have asked about Windows because I'm doing this really cool thing here and I'm, I, I'm really proud of it. This is your chance to like, it's kind of like, I don't want to say your last chance or your last ditch effort, but this is your chance to, again, make the interviewer aware of something that they might've missed. So all in all, these are six questions that I use when I'm giving behavioral interviews. Again, one of those I do all the time, regardless of my interview. But these are those six questions that I keep in my in my bank of questions. And I don't necessarily use all six of these questions every time, but I have them available for me to use when needed. So I hope you take these, you think about them, you think about how you would answer them, you think about how you would ask them, you think about just different scenarios, different conversations about these questions. And again, as I mentioned in, uh, earlier in the video, Think about how you answer these questions with those those methods, right? The star method, the car method, go research them if you're not familiar with them. But these are how you should be answering those behavioral questions. Make sure you're framing that situation, right? Given, given the interviewer the context of what's going on, telling them exactly what you did, you, not your coworkers, not the, like show that you had an element in there, say what happened, right? And then tell them, tell us the results. I think a lot of people miss that when they're interviewing. And the to, to before I end the video, the motivation for me making this video in general was because I've been doing a lot of mock interviews lately. And I've been, I've been observing a lot of mock interviews lately as well. And I see this theme developing where people don't know how to answer these questions. They're not using the star method. They're not using the car method. They're not being real. They're not seeing it from both perspectives. So I just wanted to make this video, show some of the questions that I ask, show some motivations of why I ask them and what do I expect people to, to provide when they're answering them and just give you that opportunity to think about it. So if you have found this video helpful, I'd love for you to let me know, right? Leave a comment, like, whatever you may do. Subscribe if you want to, if you find it helpful. And if you have any questions that about the, the content here, feel free to ask. And if you have any other interview questions that you're like, this is my top interview question, I'd love to hear it. Right, throw it in the comment. I'd love to hear like, hey Matt, this is an interview question that I always ask. And I wanna hear what you have to say. Cause I'm just one person, right? I don't know everything, but I can just share my experience with you. So again, thank you all for watching this video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and you learned something from it. And as always, I will see you in the next one.